Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. It's no secret that the Steam Deck is one of the best handheld emulation machines on the market right now. And it just got even better because we've got an official build of Bado Serra for the Steam Deck. Now I do want to mention that this is still in beta. You will find a few bugs here and there, but overall everything that I've tested so far has worked out really well. And this operating system that you're seeing on screen now is actually running from a micro SD card. So we've basically got a dual boot system here. We can boot this up on the micro SD card. We can restart the system and go right back into Steam OS or Steam Deck OS as some people call it. So I know it's a bit hard to see, but I'll go down here to information. And uh, you can see that we're on the Steam Deck. I mean, I'm not streaming anything. There's no trickery going on. I've got a SanDisk 256 gigabyte micro SD card installed here with everything set up. Uh, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth is working. Obviously, we've got sound. We've got video here. And uh, if you did want to go through and change the theme, you can go through the official Botocera downloader that's built into the operating system and download a different theme. I've downloaded everything that's available right now. I've just kind of been picking and choosing, looking around to see what looks good to me. And this one here is definitely my favorite so far. And yeah, I completely understand that we can install these emulators in SteamOS. We can also install Emulation Station. There's several ways to do that. But personally, I like having a standalone operating system. And I'm a huge fan of Botocera. And with the latest versions of Botocera, actually since version 33... We do have Mango HUD built in. You can disable it or enable it so we can see what's going on with the system at any given time. And in this video, I wanted to give you a feel for how this performs. And so far, it's been performing amazingly on the Steam Deck. Super easy emulator to run here. We've got GBA or Game Boy Advance. And obviously, we're going to get great performance with these lower end emulators. I mean, anything like NES, PC Engine, Neo Geo, CPS 1, 2, 3. As you can see, GBA, Game Boy, Game Boy Color. We've got more than enough power here. All that stuff that I just mentioned will basically run on an older dual core 1 gigahertz ARM CPU. And with the Steam Deck, we've got way more power than that. So, you know, we were all expecting that to run well. So let's go ahead and move over to something a little heavier duty. We'll go with, uh, let's do PSP. And for this, we'll go with something a little harder to emulate. Let's do Chains of Olympus. And by the way, this is using the standalone version of PPSSPP, 2x resolution, OpenGL back in. I didn't even try to swap over to Vulkan because I was getting great performance. So yeah, when it comes to PSP emulation on the Steam Deck, as long as the game's compatible with said emulator, PPSSPP, it's going to run it well. Now there are a couple games. Uh, one that comes to mind is Killzone. I did have to drop it down to 1x to get it to run at full speed. But even the God of War series, which is notoriously hard to emulate on lower end devices, runs at 2x on the Steam Deck. And that's plenty given that we have a 1280 by 800 display. Now real quick, I did want to show you that we can dual boot this system, so we'll just head into the menu and I'll restart the Steam Deck. So we're not going to be booting from the micro SD card, which is what Botocera is installed on. Right now it's going to boot from the internal M.2 SSD, and that's where we have SteamOS. So once we boot back into this operating system here, we can start playing our favorite PC games on our Steam Deck. No problem at all. And with this setup here, I do have some emulators installed, you know, directly in SteamOS. And like I mentioned, we can install Emulation Station right here, and you can run everything from the micro SD card in SteamOS if you want to. But now that we've got an awesome standalone emulation front end, I think I'm just going to be swapping over here. I've been waiting for Botocera to release for the Steam Deck since the Steam Deck released, and we finally got a really good build now. Alright, so here's the micro SD card I have Botocera installed on. It's a 256 gigabyte card, but right now I'm working on a 512 card. We're going to hold volume up, turn the power on, we're going to keep holding that volume up, and it's basically going to bring us into the Steam Deck BIOS. Once we're here, we can go to our boot menu, select our SD card, and boot it right up. Now you could run this from an external hard drive or a USB drive if you want to, but remember with the Steam Deck, we've only got one USB Type-C port. Really wish that Valve would have added at least one full-size USB port. Even if it was 2.0, it would have been really nice to have. But yeah, as you can see, we've got that Botocera boot menu. And uh, even on this slower, older SanDisk card, it actually boots up pretty quickly. Right into it, we can start playing our favorite retro games. So it doesn't take long to swap over from SteamOS to Botocera. And I'm sure somebody's going to come up with, or maybe already has come up with, a way just to boot directly from that micro SD card from within SteamOS, some kind of plug-in. Basically, the way I was thinking about it, uh, you just choose that option. It would reboot the Steam Deck and automatically boot from the external drive, which in this case is that micro SD. 
Okay, so I just jumped right into a little bit of GameCube gameplay with one of my favorite games here, Automotolista. It's definitely a harder one to emulate, not the hardest in the library, but as you can see, it's running at 60 if you take a look at Mango HUD. You can also turn on the internal FPS counter for the Dolphin emulator. And by the way, this is using the standalone Dolphin emulator for Linux. And again, even with this one, I'm still using the OpenGL backend. I haven't had to go into any of these emulators and swap over to Vulkan yet. I'm sure some games may benefit from it, but from everything that I've tested so far, even the OpenGL backend on this AMD chip has worked amazingly. And since we were right there with the Dolphin emulator, I figured we'd go ahead and test out a Wii game, Tatsunoko vs. Capcom. This is one of those games that does have a lot of particles on screen, and on the initial playthrough, you might notice a few dips every once in a while, but it will handle it just fine. And by the way, I am at 2x resolution with the Dolphin emulator. We could probably go higher with some of these games, but it's kind of a moot point because we've only got that 1280 by 800 display. Another one I wanted to show off was PS2. This is using the standalone version of PC SX2. We've got some Bloody Roar 4 running here. One game that I love playing on the go is Gran Turismo 4. I know the new one's out for PS5. I've been playing the heck out of it. I'm a huge fan of Gran Turismo 4, and having it on a handheld like this at full speed is really awesome. Next up, we've got some Wii U. Here's Bayonetta 2 running at 60 FPS. Really impressed with the performance of Wii U on this device, but you know, when it comes down to it, the developers have done an amazing job with this emulator on Windows and Linux. And the final one we're taking a look at here is 3DS using the Citra emulator. Now this has definitely come a long way on AMD. This emulator uses OpenGL, and when it comes to using OpenGL with AMD, at least on Windows, performance wasn't always great. But, you know, with all of the updates to the Radeon drivers and the emulator itself, we're getting some great performance out of 3DS. So yeah, for being such an early build of Botocera for the Steam Deck, this is actually working out really great. It's in beta right now, but you can head over to the website and download it from their main page. I'll leave a link in the description. You can go ahead and flash it to a micro SD card, or if you wanted to wipe your internal storage, you could always do that, but I would just recommend running it from an SD. Now, if anybody's interested, I can do a full tutorial showing you how to set everything up, getting your games transferred over, BIOSes and everything like that, just let me know in the comments below. But this was really kind of a showcase video, just showing off what kind of performance you can expect out of Botocera on the Steam Deck. And right now it's really good, but over time it's only going to get better. And I'd say the best part about an operating system like this is it is relatively lightweight and it runs great from a micro SD card, so we don't need any special storage or anything like that for the Steam Deck. And yeah, I would highly recommend trying it out if you're into emulation and you have a Steam Deck. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. If there's anything else you want to see running on the Steam Deck, just let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.